that Islam has been established on five pillars and that all iman, the chapter of matters of al iman. We continue, inshallah ta'ala, with the next uh, chapter in this kitab al iman. Uh, he says, rahimahullah, babun, aw babun muslimu, babun muslimi, man salim al muslimuna min lisani wa If you say babun, ala al-tarweed, you say babun, al muslimu, man salim al muslimuna min lisani wa or if it's Ayah Al-Dafa, Babu Muslimi, Man Salim Al-Muslimuna, Min Lisani Yawadi. Which means, Al-Muslim, the Muslim, Man Salim Al-Muslimuna. It's the one that, Salim is the verb here, is the one that the Muslimun are safe from his, uh, the effect, of the evil effect of his tongue and his hands. Al-Muslimu, Man Salim Al-Muslimuna. That's what salam from it, the salam. When a person says the salam, that means he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Muslim to be free from all harm. Uh, so the Muslim, uh, the complete Muslim, the one that would uh, complete his Islam, is the one that the Muslimun would not be harmed by his tongue and his hands. Salim al Muslimuna, which is a part of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that he mentions. In the chat, this is how Al Imam Al Bukhari, rahimahullah, he gave the title to many of his chapters like this. The title will be part of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that he would mention in the chapter, or he would mention it somewhere else, or even the hadith might not be in Al Bukhari, but he would use a part of the hadith or the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ as the title, and then he would bring the hadith that relates to this thing. Here he said Al Muslim. And the kitab or the big chapter name is Al Iman. And the chapter before he said that, Umur Al Iman, the matters of Al Iman. Before that, Unya Al Islam. So the word Al Islam and Iman are being used, and it will be used in the titles of the chapter for the whole kitab Al Iman. Uh, although there's difference between both. But Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, he used to uh, say that Al Islam or Iman and Mutawadifan. Mutab- mutab- they, they mean the same thing. So as he said that Iman increases and decreases, increases with the good deeds and decreases with the bad deeds, and it's qawl wa amal, it's speech and actions. He says in the titles of his chapters that Islam is the same way. Islam also increases and decreases, right? So they use the word Islam and Iman interchangeably, which is true. And uh, these types of terminologies, as we probably mentioned it before, Al Islam al Iman, uh, as the ulama they say, this, these types of uh, words, إذا اجتمعت اختارقت وإذا اختارقت اجتمعت أي في المعنى. If they are together in the same context, then they mean two things. But if each one of them is alone in the context, then it means also the other thing. So if you read a verse in the Quran, if you read the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, take it as a rule. If you see the word Islam in it. That means Islam and Iman. It means the whole religion of Islam, and it means Iman, it means both. If the word Iman is mentioned alone, then it also means Islam. But if both are mentioned in the same context, then Islam means the outside appearance of things, the five pillars of Islam, and so on. And Al Iman would mean if it's mentioned in the same context with Al Islam, the inside actions and belief, and so on. Right? So that would not go against the definition of Al-Iman. So again, Al-Iman is not just the belief in the heart, which is a very distorted belief. Al-Iman is the belief in the heart, is the actions done by the heart, is the speech of the tongue, is the different parts of our bodies, our actions, it's the whole entire deen of Al-Islam. And that's what he proves with these chapters and chapters these hadith, that it really proves that Al-Iman is not just the belief in the heart. There are many matters of Al-Iman, 
And this is again the, 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 the proper belief of the people of Ahl And we talked about the deviations from them. Then he mentioned the hadith uh, in the chapter. He says, Haddathana Adam ibn Abi, yes. Qal haddathana Shu'bah. And Shu'bah is, is one of the great imma uh, of the hadith, uh, Shu'bah ibn Hajjaj. An Abdullah ibn Abi Safar, wa Ismail ibn Abi Khalid, an al-Sha'bi, also one of the great imma of uh, matters of the hadith. An Abdullah ibn Amr, radiyallahu anhuma, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسان وادي والمهاجر من هجر ما نهى الله عنه Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said المسلم defining a Muslim the Muslim with an alif and lam here right it means this is what the Muslims are this is the definition of the Muslim the one that completes his Islam من سلم المسلمون من لسان وادي which is the same part of the title the one that المسلمون are free and protected from his tongue and his hands and as the ulama they say uh, the tongue is mentioned first because the tongue can be more severe than one's hands the hand can leave a scar that uh, will be cured after some time but the tongue sometimes the scar that the tongue do uh, the scar of it can stay for a long time. When a person attacks one's honor and dignity, that's more painful for those who are uh, noble and they have dignity and honor than uh, the effect of one's uh, head. And both, of course, are evil things. That means the Muslim is supposed to observe the rights of others and not to cause any harm to others. He should have his benefit extended to others, not his harm extended to others. So, uh, and it's a, it's a sign that whoever hurts other Muslims with his tongue or with his hand, that means he has a deficiency, a weakness in his Islam. Does not take him outside the fold of Islam, does not make him a kafir by this act, but it weakens his Islam. It uh, weakens his Islam like it weakens his Iman. And this is one of the sins that the tawbah of it is more difficult than the rest of the sins. The sins that is between the human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person sincerely repenting to Allah, quitting the sin, regretting the sin, having the strong intention not to commit it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiven. But the sins that has to do with others, then you have to have, add another condition to it, is that that person has to forgive you. And if a person leaves it till the day of judgment, there is no forgiveness even between a mother and her son, or a father and his son. No forgiveness to one another because each one would be in need of any good deed that he can take from others. So this is the time when a person free himself from the effect of the sins that is done towards others. And the one that perfect his Islam is the one that no Muslim will be harmed by his tongue or by his hands. The details of that is, uh, of course, many verses of the Qur'an, many hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the sins done by the tongue, whether it's lying or backbiting or slandering, and so on. And with the hands, it goes from uh, touching to killing. Uh, everything of that, of course, has to be done in the proper way. Uh, forbidden, uh, what is forbidden is forbidden, and what is permissive is permissive. So a Muslim, the one that has uh, al-kamil, the one that has complete Islam, is the one that Muslimun would be free or protected from his hands and his hands. Uh, and his hands, his tongue and his hands. Wal-muhajiru, the hadith continues, wal-muhajiru man hajar wa manaha Allah wa'an. Al-muhajir, the Prophet ﷺ, is defining al-muhajir, the one that migrates. And the hijrah is an act of worship. And it's still the day of judgment from uh, the places of Kufr to the place of Islam, and of course at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they migrated from Mecca to Al-Madina, and this was such a virtuous act that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala praised the Muhajireen, uh, as we see in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's a physical uh, movement of one's, from one's place to another. It's basically, uh, the Hijrah happens when a person leaves whatever he loves, his place where he was raised, and he plays when he was young. Usually everyone, uh, the place that he was raised in, right, this is the place that he got attached for the rest of his life. And that's why we have to make sure that also uh, our children, where is the place that they get attached to? 
right? So uh, the place that the person is growing up in, this is what he would be attached to for the rest of his life. So when someone leaves this, right, it's not an easy thing. Uh, he leaves what he desired. So the hijrah was not an easy thing for people to leave the place where they uh, lived and their wealth and their families and so on. They left that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why they were rewarded. But then the Prophet وسلم, is saying that the true uh, muhajir, the true one that would make hijrah is man hajra man the one that would make hijrah from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbid. Right? So leaving the sins, it's like leaving your hometown as the Sahaba radiallahu anhu made the hijrah. That means it needs sacrifice. So when someone is repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving sins, he should not be like the one that wants to make hijrah but to keep all of his money and to keep his house and to keep all of his possessions. That's not hijrah then. They left everything for the sake of Allah. If they could take anything with them, mashallah, no problem, they would do that. But if they can't, hijrah comes first. As in the story of uh, Suhaib radiallahu an, when he migrated, and when he left Mecca and the disbelievers, they went after him and there was a confrontation between him and them and he told them, if I uh, tell you where is my wealth, would you let me go? And they said yes and he left them, he told them where is his, his wealth and he went to the Prophet Wasallam. when the Prophet Wasallam saw him, the Wahy, the revelation had came to the Prophet Wasallam before he reached al Medina. the Prophet Wasallam told him, Rabi al-Bayah, uh, which means the, your trade has been profitable, O Awayah. The meaning is Zuhayb. Your trade has been profitable. That you gave your wealth, but for the sake of Allah, to complete your hijrah. To make the hijrah for the sake of Allah. So the same thing when a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the life of sin. If he can keep whatever he has in the halal way, mashallah, this is good, but if he can, if it's haram what he earned, if whatever there is, then he has to be sincerely repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if it uh, leads to sacrifice, then he should sacrifice for the sake of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace him. So this is the true hijrah, that means it's not just from uh, moving physically from one place to the other, we have to be always in that state of hijrah, to be away from sins, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, قال أبو عبد الله من المخيري رحمه الله وقال أبو معاوية قال حدثنا داود وابن أبي هند عن عامر قال سمعت عبد الله يعني ابن عمر عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال عبد الأعلى عن داود عن عامر عن عبد الله عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. he mentioned more than one route to the same narration and this is part of the تعليقات في البخاري he might as in this case he mentioned someone that is not his Sheikh or his uh, scholar or his uh, teacher immediately, uh, but he would mention that and it's not part of the Sahih. But this is a continuous uh, chain of narration uh, to the same narration of the Hadith that strengthens the level of the Hadith. And, and again, all the Hadith of Sahih and Bukhari are authentic Hadith. So this is with this chapter as part of Islam or part of an Iman is to uh, have Muslims uh, safe from your tongue and your hand. Uh, this is a, one another point. Have uh, amal meaning it's a, it's not a, a, an action that you would do. It's action that you don't do, and you get rewarded by doing that. Right. So when a person is 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 not speaking in a bad way towards others, he's not doing anything. And if he's not hurting anyone physically, he's not doing any action. But this is a rewardable act, especially if he can do that. If he can backbite and he can say bad things, but he didn't do it for the sake of Allah. If he can hurt someone physically, but he doesn't do it, not out of the fear of uh, to be arrested or so. No, he is leaving it for the sake of Allah. Then he get rewarded by leaving. So the deen of Islam is not just doing things. It's also leaving things for the sake of Allah. Same way when we apply the sunnah, is to do what the Prophet ﷺ did and to leave what the Prophet ﷺ left in matters of the deen. You get rewarded not just by doing, but also by leaving things, but you leave it for the sake of Allah. Then he says, that ayyul islami afdal. Next chapter, ayyul islami afdal. What is the best Islam? What is the best Islam? Again, it refers to that Islam is not just one thing. It's not just the first pillar of Islam. Islam here means the whole entire religion when it comes to matters of actions. 
right? So uh, the matters of Al Islam, as he said, Umur al Iman. So the same thing with matters of Al Islam. Which is the best matter of Al Islam is better? Which deed in Islam is more virtuous than other? And there are many things like this. This is Malatib al Amal. This is the levels of the deeds that it's a, a, a great uh, knowledge that a person should acquire. Uh, those who have the zeal to reach the highest levels, right, they have to know these levels of deeds because some deeds are more virtuous than others. Some, Fatiha uh, is the best surah in the Quran, Ayatul Kursi is the best ayah in the Quran, uh, the month of Al Muharram, the best month in fasting. Uh, you will find many hadith, what is the best of what, then this is what a person should do the best. So, what are the best of matters of Al Islam? He says, قال حدثنا سعيد بن يحيى بن سعيد القرشي سعيد بن يحيى بن بن سعيد القرشي This is the Sheikh of Imam Al Bukhari. And you would, uh, when you go through the the Sanad of many Hadith, you would find many uh, سعيد بن يحيى أو يحيى بن سعيد. There is يحيى بن سعيد, right? More than one. Uh, and there is. Uh, for example, Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Khattan, Yahya ibn Sa'id al this is Sa'id ibn Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Qurashi. Al-Qurashi, this is his nasab, uh, or this is what he belongs to, meaning he's from Quraysh. Qala haddathana Abi, which is Yahya ibn Sa'id. There's a famous alim of hadith, his name is Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Khattan. That's not him, that's not someone else. He also, the Imam Bukhari, he narrates a hadith from him. قال حدثنا أبي my father which is a beautiful thing and sometimes the Senate you would find that the son narrates from his father and you find in the same Senate here قال حدثنا أبو بردة ابن عبد الله ابن أبي بردة عن أبي بردة عن أبي موسى رضي الله عنه so again it's the the son narrates from his father and then Abu Burda narrates from his father from Abu Musa al Ashari uh, which is again to show how uh, the son and the, and the father, mashallah, in the, in the path of knowledge narrating from one another matters of the deen. And Abi Musa uh, al Ash'ari, one of the uh, great companions of the Prophet, قال, uh, قال he said that they said, O Messenger of Allah, Ayul Islami Afdal, what is the best Islam, what is the best matter of Islam? Meaning, when they say afdal, it means what? It means the best in rewards, right? If it's the best month, that means the best of the rewards to be done in this month. Uh, so ayyul islami afdal, what is the best in matters of the Islam, that it's more reward than higher level? The Prophet ﷺ said, Man salim al-muslimuna min lisani hadith. The same hadith, Man salim al-muslimuna min lisani hadith. However, the highest level, the best reward, is the Islam that makes the person uh, protect Muslims from his tongue and his hands. This is the highest level of Islam. When a person reaches this level of manners, that nobody will be affected in a negative way by his tongue and his hands. Although this is a negative act, but this is the best level. When there's no actions here, it's something that you don't do, which is how easy it is. As Sufyan al-Tawri, rahimahullah, he said opposite to what we might think, the easiest thing is to give sins, right? It's sometimes the most difficult thing, but it's the easiest thing when it comes to physical action. Why? Because you're ordered to stay away. When you stay away, that means you're not doing anything. That's, that's the easiest thing. But if you're ordered to do something, that's difficult. Or sometimes it's difficult. you have to take means, you have to walk, you have to move, you have to put effort. Right? If you're asked not to work, for example, you relax, you stay home. That's an easy thing. If you're asked not to work. Right? So the same thing when a person is asked not to commit sins, that means to, uh, not to do anything with regards to sins, uh, especially when it comes to uh, har harming others. This is the highest level of rewards. So this is from an Islam, from an Iman. Uh, then he says that, Ta'am al-Ta'am min al-Islam. Ta'am al-Ta'am min al-Islam. Ta'am, feeding or giving food is from Al-Islam. This is from Al-Islam. So again, the, he, he's, not, he's making sure, stressing the fact, which is as it's clearly mentioned in the hadith, that this is not separating Al-Iman and Al-Islam from these actions. Right? Some people think, okay, you become a Muslim, you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, 
that's it. Then, do actions or not to do actions, it doesn't matter. It does not affect your Islam. Right? And you will find this uh, statement that Allah knows best where it comes from. Uh, my deen is here, my Islam is inside, my Iman is in the heart. And my inside is, mashallah, is, is beautiful. So these actions and these types of things is not that important. Where did they get this from? This is a distorted belief, right? If the Iman is strong in the heart, then it will show in one's tongue and one's actions. If one's actions and one's tongue is against what Al-Islam is, that means without any doubt, without even checking what's in the heart, what's in the heart is, is all filth and it's against the deen of Al-Islam. Somebody curses and backbites and abuse others and commit sins and so on. Can we say that this person's heart is clean but his heart is clean? No, his heart is filthy. Because if his heart is clean, he would not do these things, right? It's the other way around. If a person is righteous and speaks all kinds of good things and his actions, mashallah, are perfect and according to the way the Prophet sallam, we do not know what's in his heart. We cannot say and make it for sure that his heart is clean because what if he's doing that just to show off? We say we hope. Right? We, we, we think that he is good, but we do not know. We do not make a decision, otherwise you are basically making a decision for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you say, أَحْسَبُوا كَذَلِكَ لَا أُزَكِّعَ اللَّهِ Do not uh, give him that, uh, the skia or this, uh, you know, the, the glad tidings, because Allah knows best. But if someone is doing evil, right, we did not check what's in his heart, but we know what's in his heart. Because evil is to be done openly, Knowingly, that means the heart is sick, the heart has a disease in it, and the person has to seek means of cure. So that's why actions are related directly to Al-Iman, and that's what scares the believers more, the most. That when they're committing a sin, it's not just a sin versus the good deeds and the balance of the deeds and the day of judgment, that this offsets this, no, it affects one's Iman, the, the core of Al-Iman, the, the most valuable thing in one's life. The sins affects one's iman, decreases the iman, does not cancel it completely, but decreases the iman, which is a very dangerous thing. So to increase the iman is to do the matters of the iman and the matters of the Islam, one of which these simple acts as we see, to feed others. This is from Al-Islam, as he says, قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا عَمْرُ بْنُ خَالِدْ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا اللَّيْثِ And Al-Layth ibn Sa'ad, one of the great imma of this deen, عن يزيد عن أبي الخير عن عبد الله بن عمرو رضي الله عنهما أن رجلا سأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الإسلام خير؟ A man asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الإسلام خير؟ What is from among the Islam is خير or good or what is the best thing in matters of Islam؟ قال تطعم الطعام وتقرأ السلام على من عرفت ومن تعرف تطعم الطعام to feed people food. وتقرأ السلام أن تقرأ من رسالة السلام to say سلام على من عرفت ومن لم تعرف to the one that you know and the one that you do not know meaning among the Muslims because one of the signs of the hereafter one of the signs of the hour as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith سلام الخاصة which means that you only give سلام to the one that you know only سلام becomes uh, selective. Your salam becomes selective. You give salam to the ones that you know, the ones that you like, right? But the ones that you don't like or the ones that you don't know, you know that they're Muslims, but you don't give their, your salam to, this is, uh, this is an evil act, right? So one of the best of the deeds is to give salam to the ones that you know and you do not know from among them. Uh, so this is one of the best deeds of Islam. Uh, does that mean that salah is not the best deed in Islam, for example? These questions is assuming that already know that after the obligations are done. So when the obligations are done, and part of the obligation is to do what we are ordered to do and to leave away sins. So a person in that level, he is already from awliyaullah salihin, the one that is doing the obligations, and away from sins, he is from the righteous people, right? Now the competition comes in with the option acts of worship. So this is where the context of this, to perfect one's uh, Islam and one's Iman and so on is to do these acts to feed others and to give the salam to those who you know and those who you do not know and again as we said before there is nothing in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where something to be said by the tongue only 
I only think that is being said is meant. So when you, when you see the virtues of saying the salam, it's because that shows the purity and the sincerity of that Muslim that is making the du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Muslims that he know and the Muslims that he do not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them from all harm in this life and in the earth. That's what assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah means. Right? This sincerity. Once a person has this heart, then it would make sense with the rest of the hadith. This is the highest level of an Islam when Muslims are safe from your tongue and your hands. And they are safe when you tell them Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. But the, at the time of the Prophet وسلم, they didn't have this uh, different faces that they put on or uh, they didn't have this separation between what is said by the tongue and what's in the heart and so on. If they say something, they mean it. Right? So that's why a salam is a sign of the heart is sincere and pure. If he is a Muslim, if he deserves the salam from you, even if he's a sinner, even if whatever there is, that means he deserves from you to have this uh, sincerity towards him. That you want to, for that person to be safe. Uh, safe from any harm, physical, in his religion and so on, in this life and in the hereafter. If that concern is there, this is the heart where uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is pleased with, is pleased with. And then we will get to see why this is the, are the best acts. The concern towards others, and this is basically the common thing that is mentioned in this ahli. Uh, take one more chapter, which is all related to the same thing. That, min al-imani an yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. From al-iman, to love uh, for him, to love for his brother, what he loved for himself which we have heard that many times and we say that all the time uh, but again this is from Al-Iman this is not something separate from Al-Iman so for those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who want to preserve their Iman and to complete their Iman and to die in a state of complete Iman they would never attain that level unless they apply these difficult things this is not an easy thing this is a difficult act to love for your brother what you love for yourself it's not an easy thing it needs a lot of sacrifice. Because if you leave yourself to your human nature, there is no way that you would love for anyone what you love for yourself. Right? So that means it needs sacrifice. It needs, uh, it does not also come by wishful thinking or you would wait for the moment for that to come. Uh, a feeling will come or inspiration that all of a sudden you find yourself loving for your Muslim what you love for yourself. It doesn't work this way. It's a decision that you make without no feelings. Feelings come later. It's a decision that you make. You decide that you would love for him what you love for yourself because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So that will affect your speech and action. And then the feelings will come later, right, if it didn't come yet. So, but this is a decision to be made. Like when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, Umar radiallahu anhu heard him, that لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من نفسي that none of you shall believe uh, till he loves me more than he loves himself. Uh, so the Umar said, the Prophet of Allah, I love you, uh, but not more than myself. Right? The Prophet said, No, Ya Umar. Till you love me more than you love yourself, he said, Al -an. Now, O Prophet of Allah, I do love you more than I love myself. He was talking from another perspective. Right? But then when he, uh, the Prophet repeated to him, he realized what is that thing because if without the Prophet وسلم, everybody would have been in the hellfire. Uh, so the love of the Prophet وسلم, is more than when you love yourself. So this is a choice uh, that you would make. And you will be truthful in that choice that it will show your actions and also uh, the feelings also but then mainly it's a decision to be made. So what's the implication of that? You, a person can think and this is what the Sahaba used to do, what they love for themselves. You love for yourself to enter Jannah. And that's the ultimate uh, desire. And that's the goal of the Muslim. So you would love for the Muslims for them also to enter Jannah. So you might do things that they might not like, but this is because of this hadith. You might advise them, call them to do what is right, forbid them from what is evil. They feel uncomfortable and they feel that you're bothering them, but it's because you love for them what you love for yourself. Uh, you love for yourself to be protected from the hellfire, so you, the same thing you do to them. Uh, and also things that are physical in this life. But what is more important is matters of deen and the everlasting joy. And also matters of this life. You like, you like to eat grapes, 
So give people grace. You like, uh, but it has to be something that is not harmful, of course. Anything that you like, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the things to be done. You think what are the things that you like, you give from what you like, as the Sahaba used to, used to do. Umar used to uh, give uh, grape because he liked grapes. So you would give it for the sake of Allah. And so on. Uh, so the hadith uh, here, It says, حدثنا مسدد قال حدثنا يحيى عن شعبة عن قتادة and this Yahya is different than the one that is عن شعبة حجاج عن قتادة عن أنس رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول عن حسين المعلم قال حدثنا قتادة عن أنس عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم different team قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه لا يؤمن أحدكم. You see the statement starts with negating iman. None of you, you would not believe till you love for your brother what you love for yourself. What does it mean you would not believe? Does it mean that you become a disbeliever? No, it refers here to the perfect or the complete iman. You would not attain complete iman till you love for your brother what you love for yourself. So this is a serious man. So uh, you would never attain complete iman till you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And again, that needs would, would needs for the person to sacrifice for the sake of Allah and to have this high level of the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's as the Prophet said, al-iman. The highest level or the strongest tie of al iman is al hubbu fi al that you love for the sake of Allah and you hate for the sake of Allah. So the thing that moves the person and drives him is always the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. So this is part of it. Uh, we'll stop until I'm disappointed.